Wormwood, so your man is in love, and in the worst kind he could possibly have fallen into, and with a woman who does not even appear in the report you sent me. You may be interested to learn that the little misunderstanding with the secret police which you tried to raise regarding some unguarded expressions in one of my videos has been tidied over. If you are reckoning on that to secure my good offices, you will find yourself mistaken. You will pay for that, as well as for your other blunders. In other news, I have enclosed a new PDF in an email I just sent to you. It describes the new House of Correction for Incompetent Tempters. You will find it profusely illustrated, and not one dull page in it. I have looked up this woman's dossier, and I'm horrified at what I find. Not only a Christian, but such a Christian! A vile, sneaking, simpering, demure, monosyllabic, mouse-like, watery, insignificant, virginal, bread-and-butter miss! The little brute! She makes me vomit! She scalds through the very pages of the dossier! It drives me mad the way the world has worsened! We'd have had her to the arena in the old days! That's what her sort is made for! Not that she'd have done much good there, either. Oh, she's the cheat, I know the sort, who looks like she'd faint at the sight of blood, but then dies with a smile. A cheat every way! Looks as if butter wouldn't melt in her mouth, and yet has a satirical wit. The sort of creature who'd find me funny. Filthy, insipid little prude, and yet ready to fall into this moron's arms like any other breeding animal. Why doesn't the enemy blast her for it if he's so moonstruck by virginity? Why does he just stand there, grinning? The enemy is a hedonist at heart. All those fasts and vigils and stakes and crosses are only a facade, or only like foam on the seashore. Out at sea, out in his sea, there is pleasure and more pleasure. He makes no secret of it, and his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Ugh! I don't think he has the least inkling of that high and austere mystery which we aspire to in the miserific vision. He's vulgar, Wormwood. He has a bourgeois mind. He has filled his world with pleasures. There are things for humans to do all day long without his minding in the least. Sleeping, eating, drinking, washing, playing, praying, making love, working. <sighs> we fight under cruel disadvantages. We have to twist everything before it's any use to us. Not that that excuses you. I'll deal with you in a moment. Then, of course, your patient becomes acquainted with her whole family and whole circle. Did you not see that the very house she lives in is one which he ought never to have entered? The whole place reeks of the deadly odor. Even their mail carrier, though fairly new, is beginning to acquire it. Even weekend visitors go away with some of it. Even the dog and cat reek of it. A house full of the impenetrable mystery. We are certain it is a matter of first principles that each member of the family must in some way be making capital out of the others. But we can't find out how. They guard as jealously as the enemy himself the real reason for this pretense of disinterested love. The whole house and garden are an obscenity. It bears a sickening resemblance to a description one human writer made of heaven. The place where there is only life, and therefore all that is not music, is silence. Music and silence, how I detest them both. How thankful we are that ever since our father entered hell, though further long ago than the humans reckoning in years could imagine, not one moment, not one speck of time or space has been surrendered to those abominations. But all has been occupied by noise. Noise. The great dynamism. The audible expression of all that is exultant, ruthless, and strong. Noise which alone defends us from silly qualms, despairing scruples, and impossible desires. We will make the whole universe a noise in the end. We've already made great strides with regards to the earth. The melodies and silences of heaven will be shouted down. I admit we are not yet loud enough, but research is in progress. And as for you, you insip- Toad pipe? Toad pipe! <clears throat> In the heat of delivery, I find that I have inadvertently allowed myself to assume the form of a large centipede. My secretary is accordingly operating the recording, but does not wish to appear on camera. Now that the transformation is complete, I recognize it as a periodical phenomenon. Some rumor of it has reached the humans, and a distorted account of it appears in the poet Milton, with the ridiculous addition that such changes of shape are a punishment imposed on us by the enemy. A more modern writer has, however, grasped the truth. Transformation proceeds from within, and is a glorious manifestation of that life force which our father would worship if he worshipped anything but himself. In present form, I feel myself even more anxious to see you, to unite you to myself in an indissoluble embrace. <laughs>